dig in, dig in, dig in, run! Hello world, my name is Miguel Francis. I'm a film school graduate from Los Angeles, California. And I'm about to go to this little hot spot right here called Crimea. Now, it was a part of Ukraine, this little country's territory, up until about March 2014, when this huge piece of land called the Russian Federation decided to go in there with its military, occupy this territory, and then annex it from Ukraine. Now, we all know this really well according to our mainstream media, but alternative media out there seems to have this point of view that everything was done by the book and Crimeans themselves decided to vote for this referendum and join Russia. I'm taking this a bit personally because my great-grandmother is from Ukraine and for my first film project, and I definitely owe this to her, I decided to risk my life, go in there and find out the truth behind Crimea. How you doing? Well, here I am in Simferopol, just, you know, standing around with Val over there, uh, kind of looking around just to see what's the situation is, what the situation is all about. So far, I'm not really seeing any militants or military. I just see a bunch of really at ease, beautiful looking people. This is weird. I expected something else. It looks very calm and very peaceful. This is a little unexpected, but stay tuned. I'll find out the truth about Crimea. So, Alexander, you were born in Crimea, right? Yes, I was born in Crimea. Yes, I was born in Crimea. My parents and my parents were born in Crimea. My parents. Now, why do you think Russia actually had the right to basically, uh, you know, take Crimea? I don't think that Russia took Crimea. Russia just returned to Crimea historically. принадлежащий Крым России. Это возврат. Это не не отбор, не захват Крыма. I'm here to find out the truth, and I just what you're telling me right now makes me uh, really it's got it's got me thinking. So thanks so much, Alexander. Я рад, что может быть даже мои слова где-то дойдут до простого американского народа. You speak English? Hi. No, no English? No? I am English little. Uh -huh. I'm here to find out the truth behind Crimea because I heard that in Crimea there is no food. Yeah. Okay, people, so here we are on the streets of Sevastopol, and there's this huge line over here, and I'm, you know, I wonder what it's for. Hey, can you ask, what's this line about? Так как идет пропаганда в Америке о том, что у нас стреляют, нас тут убивают. Товарищи, покажите российские паспорта. Покажите все, пожалуйста. Я, пожалуйста, покажите, что российские паспорта. Я такая счастливая, ну, не только я, все. До сих пор понять не могу, что мы в России. Вот здесь понимаю, здесь не понимаю, потом наоборот, здесь понимаю, здесь не понимаю. Очень счастливые, как дураки. Поняли, да? Right, по английски yeah. я не могу. Okay. Ну, действительно, что там говорить? И слезы были, и все на свете. Счастливого вам. I'm, I'm shocked. So, uh, I'll, need a, I'll need a minute to dissolve this information and think this over. Hey, Billy, how you doing, man? I'm doing okay, how's your trip? How's it like under Russian occupation? 
no you know, that's the thing, man. Right? There, it's, it's like there's no occupation. I, 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 you know, I see no gunmen on the streets. There are no soldiers here. Well, it didn't all happen at gunpoint. So, right, there was no gunpoint, you know, at, at least from what I've been uh, gathering here so far. Uh, people are very happy, you know. Uh, uh, we've been told one thing back home in the States, and here I am getting a totally different picture, you know. What, what should I do, man? Any suggestions? <laughs> Looking into it. That's the only thing you can do. You know, that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, man. Stay safe. Okay, world, so here we are in Sevastopol, and we're here to find out the truth about Crimea. And I think to know the, uh, to understand the present and the future, we have to look into the city's past. Also, there's a statue, this fierce looking lady. So I'm gonna ask around some locals to see what, what it stands for. See this uh, lady on the phone here. Hi, excuse me. Hi. Can you, uh, you have a minute? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Miguel. Olga. Olga. What's the name of this uh, fierce woman? Uh, Catherine II, Catherine the Great. During her rule, Crimea became part of Russian Empire in uh, 1783. Wow. So does that mean that actually Crimea has been Russian for almost as long as the United States existed? Am I correct? <laughs> yes. Wow. Catherine the Great was a successor in the last uh, struggle with Turkey for entrance to Black Sea. And Crimea, as a result, became a part of Russian Empire. Wow. It was a diplomatic uh, struggle and war, and previous so war there was, there was some Turkey. fighting and some diplomacy involved? Yes. And, and how long did this struggle? For uh, centuries. For centuries? Yes. Wow. Started uh, from Peter the Great, Peter the First. How do you know this? Mm, I'm a historian. Oh, wow. No. Look at that, Val. We got a historian off the bat. So what's Ukrainian about this? Ukrainians uh, were invited by Catherine II uh, at the beginning of uh, 19th century after getting the Crimea. They were invited to live here? Yes, because uh -huh. uh, there were a lack of population in Crimea. Okay, people. Here I am walking up to the... Uh, Graveyard, the brotherly graveyard of the first Sevastopol siege of 1950, 1854 to 1855. And it looks like I got ourselves a historian finally who will be able to give us a competent view on the whole subject. What is this uh, building? It's the main памятник Братского кладбища, храм святителя Николая, посвящен тем, кто погиб защищая Севастополь в первую оборону Севастополя. Во время Крымской войны, или Восточной, как ее называют на Западе, Россия воевала с Англией, Францией, Турцией и с Ардинским королевством. Центральным событием данной войны явилась 349-дневная оборона и осада Севастополя. Русские потеряли почти 128 тысяч человек и где-то около 50 тысяч покоятся на этом братском кладбище. Здесь офицеры, генералы, адмиралы, солдаты, матросы российской армии и Черноморского флота. This place is like filled with heroes, you know? I want to Instagram this and uh, make sure the world knows. Let's go. Here we see how the French and English are blessed by the Turks' attack against Russia. 
And it says here that, well done, my little man, you now go and take Sevastopol. So basically, Vladimir, uh, even back in those days, there was a, a definite information war happening between the West and Russia. Ну, безусловно, Крым это вообще была территория, за которой все время боролись и турки, и Европа, сразу после того, как Крым был присоединен к России. History is totally repeating itself, you know, that's, that's what I, that's why I know. На улице Парижа встречаются два мужчины. Один идет с собакой, с бульдогом. Приятель спрашивает, почему ты назвал своего бульдога Севастополем? Попробуй, возьми его, тогда узнаешь. Try and take it, and you'll know. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> right. Try and take Sevastopol, huh? Then you'll know how, how hard it bites. Вот военно-морской флаг, под которым воевали в 1941-1942 году, вот черноморцы здесь, в Севастополе. Немцам тяжело было взять Севастополь, который имел три рубежа обороны. Русские войска оборонялись мужественно. Задача была держать Крым до последнего. Почему? А потому что коммуникации, по которым можно было перевозить нефть из Румынии, другой нефти в Европе не было, самое удобное это было морем. А здесь Черноморский флот мешал. Вот почему и война для Советского Союза началась именно с Севастополя. So this is again a part of the Russian history, World War II. So this is Russian Crimea. Unbelievable. Да, yes, of course. Ну вот это место, мы сюда подошли, здесь лучше всего, наверное, будет видно, что происходило в последние дни. Задача была... Взорвать батарею, чтобы не досталось врагу. Эту задачу выполняли моряки, личный состав под руководством командира батареи. Здесь находилось помещение радиооператоров. Вот там секретная часть. А вот в этих казематах находились командиры Красной Армии. Абсолютно брехтейкин. Это true history. Right here. At the Second Siege Fortress. Но самая большая потеря – это, конечно, неэвакуированные войска в последние дни обороны. Их численность разная. Немцы вообще до 100 тысяч дают. Вот это место, где мы сейчас находимся, здесь под скалами находились тысячи людей. Сейчас это красивое Черное море. На самом деле она скрывает в себе трагедию последних дней обороны, участников которого был и мой отец. Несколько слоев трупы здесь плавали. So this is truly, you know, heroic, uh, magnificent history that Crimea has here with, with Russia. So, so what does Ukraine have to do with all of this? Посмотрите, в Севастополе имеются турецкое кладбище, на котором захоронены турки, которые воевали, пытаясь взять Севастополь. Французское кладбище, англичане, итальянцы. Есть русское кладбище, но нет украинского кладбища. Как государство Украина никогда, никакого отношения к этой трагической истории не имела. Okay, well, no selfie at this time. Val is doing the job, I'm driving. Finally, I got a Chevy <laughs> in Crimea. And we're moving to another, look at this, Val, another uh, strategic historical object of the Russian Crimea. This is the Sevastopol Lighthouse. Это первый маяк, который построила Россия на побережье Крыма в 1816 году. Он определял местоположение судов. И во время Великой Отечественной войны по ориентированию на этот маяк корабли заходили, 
в бухту Севастополя подвозили боепитание, пополнение и увозили раненых. Здесь погибло очень большое количество людей, защитников Севастополя. Hello, hey, hey, Barrett, hey, yo, uh, dude, what's up, brother? Okay, look, I got this very important strategical object lighthouse in Crimea, and I need air support right now. By the way, guys, take a look at this thing over there. See this uh, old-looking structure kind of stadium thing? That's an anti-missile defense system. And according to a rumor, uh, this facility during the Ukrainian times was offered as a lease to the United States. But because, supposedly, because this facility points towards uh, Turkey and not towards Russia, my fellow Americans decided not to use this facility. It's a tough time for me, psychologically, because I, I feel like I've been lied to, you know, by my, by my own government. Back home in the States, my media, mm -hmm. it seems like they lied to me. You can ask everybody in this line. As you ask everybody, they will tell you that uh, in common they will be the Russians. It's really? true. For the locals, I think it will be better, only better. You know, the, the Russians. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you so much. Wow. Man, you heard that, huh? Yeah. That is beautiful. That is just absolutely amazing view. Kind of looks like Los Angeles, by the way. I, I really am starting to have almost no doubt in my mind that Crimea is indeed Russia. Oh my God, Val, look at these. What? Company. Ah. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. Have one. This is really good. Mmm. Nom 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 nom. Things should have been American. <laughs> Here. Oh, All these things should have belonged to America, but I'm done. America! <laughs> Action. Okay, guys. Well, I did my homework and I came to Foros. That was over here with me, as always, and we are still researching the truth behind Crimea. Irina, how are you? Good meeting you. Where is Ukraine in this history of, of Crimea? Ukrainian history started here in the Soviet Union. At that time, when the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union was Nikita Sergeyevich Khrushchev, he was a refugee from Ukraine, and he Большая любовь была к этому месту. А тогда была серьезная конкурентная борьба. Он, чтобы удержаться, решил такой подарок сделать Украине. В 1956 году Крым был передан Украине. Вау, это хороший подарок. Так вот, когда Крымия была Украине. Только тогда... По 1956 году он вошел в состав Украинской Советской Социалистической Республики. So what happened to Crimea after the fall of the Soviet Union? В декабре 1991 года провели референдум. Здесь образуется автономная республика Крым. Но никто не обратил внимания на результаты референдума и ее оставили в составе самостоятельной Украины. В тот момент можно было решить этот вопрос, но Ельцину было не до этого. Его все 10 лет поили, и он ни разу не поднял этот вопрос. И 23 года народ гнобили, холод преподавали украинский язык, заставляли э, документацию вести на украинском языке, детей на перемен, когда же заставляли говорить по-украински. А вот сегодня последний референдум. И, наконец-то, нас услышали. 98% всех крымчан пришли на референдум и сказали, хотим назад, домой, хотим в Россию.
thank you so much for being here. Allow me to. Okay, you've been awesome. Thank you so much. Спасибо большое. How does it feel like living in a new country, in Russia? What is best? Yeah? You like it? Any occupation happening? Any soldiers? You know, Absolutely. evil Putin. No, Putin. no, Putin. 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 The best of the best of the best. Wow. Do you feel that uh, um, that there's an occupation going on here? There's some, you know, people are being forced to live in Russia. No, no, no. All we are for Russia, and uh, we can't even imagine being now and living like people live in Donetsk or in Lugansk. This is a real terror. That is why. We like it and we enjoy the situation. I think that you now... You feel safe? We feel safe, yes. This is the Yalta Vivadia Palace. Uh -huh. And uh, it was the last summer residence of the Emperor Nicholas II. Just the Russian history is overwhelming in this. Who is that? I see, I see three people. Very important historical event took place here in 1945, when the big three, Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin, met right here to decide the fate of the post-war Europe. Wow. And remember, three leaders were together mm -hmm. as they were allied powers. Mm -hmm. So this is Anton Chekhov's house. Chekhov's house or White Dacha. Well, and this is the heart of the house, the study where Anton Chekhov oh. created his short stories. Look place. at the beauty of this place. Do you recognize the gentleman? Uh, no. <laughs> Leo Tolstoy. That's Leo Tolstoy, wow. And in the corner is the Ericsson telephone, which Anton Chekhov used to call Leo Tolstoy. Hey, Dad, look at the ocean, Dad. You like it? Yeah, I like it, man. Wow. Beautiful view, huh? It's beautiful. This is Crimea. This is Yalta. I came to the end of my trip now, and I, and I came to the conclusion that people are happy that they're back to their historical motherland. From Catherine the Great all the way to the end of the Soviet Union, uh, Crimea was basically under Russian. Control. It's amazing work that you are doing there, you know. It's not a city. Well, Dad, thanks so much for hearing me out, man. And uh, I love you. I will see you soon. I love you. Bye bye. I was told by some locals that uh, I definitely have to check out this spot. This is called the Grote of Salapa. The great Russian singer in the past. Whoa. Hey, guys, you speak English? Don't <laughs> 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 worry, A little English? Hey, Miguel, how are you? <laughs> are you guys happy with the uh, yeah. the referendum? Yeah. You happy to be back in Russia? Скажи, что я украинец, и я за то, чтобы здесь был мир. Я не хочу войны. My father is from Ukraine, and he happy to return to Russia. Spasibo. Spasibo. <laughs> All right, guys. Take yeah. care. Bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this. So this is where Salapin found his inspiration. I gotta speed on up and get the hours. We got to wake up and smell the lies. There ain't no real terrorists and no real spies.
Thank you.